We crawled for what felt like an age. The tunnel was a tight fit, which meant it was probably freshly dug. It also stank something foul. That usually meant either spoiled food or some poor VC bastard died down there and was left to rot. After about 40 minutes of crawling and total silence, I saw the tunnel head open into a room. I tapped Benoit on the head with my foot, and I heard him ready his pistol. I climbed down into the open chamber, pointing my pistol at the shadows. The room was dimly lit by a small oil lamp, but it was also deserted. We took a moment to adjust. It was the longest single tunnel segment either of us had ever crawled through, and it also had no traps, which was unusual. Where was everyone who dug the damn thing? Save for the lamp hanging on the roof and a canvas tarp on the opposite side, the room was empty. I approached the tarp, and I used my pistol to move it aside. Behind the tarp was a stone staircase leading down. A stone staircase? This far underground? I whispered to Benoit. VC didn't build this, man. This is old. Very old. Older than America old. Benoit whispered back with fear in his voice. We've come this far, man. We gotta keep going. We both walked slowly down the narrow staircase. Our flashlights had red lenses, and I swear the illuminated staircase looked like we were descending into hell. The staircase was almost as deep as the tunnel was long. Finally, I saw the staircase blocked by another tarp, but light was coming from the other side. I moved aside the tarp with my pistol. My finger trembled on the trigger. My eyes lit up and my heart raced. I almost pulled the trigger, but I didn't. Something made me pause. The room had at least 10 people in it, none of them armed. I pointed my pistol at the group and illuminated them with the flashlight. They still didn't respond. They just stood there, rocking gently forward and back. And why don't shoot, man? There's people in here, but there's... there's... There's something wrong with them. I stepped into the tiny room which was only lit by small candles. Benoit followed. We both shone our flashlights at the people, but they paid no attention. They just continued to rock, gently, forward and back. I shone my flashlight in one of their faces. I clicked my fingers, but she didn't respond. Her clothes told me she was VC. They were all VC, three women and seven men. All just gently rocking, forward and back. Not a care in the fucking world. Their eyes were a solid color though. Which color, I can't really say, as I could only see them with my red flashlight, but a solid color. Benoit motioned with his flashlight to the corner. Their rifles all sat in a pile, badly rusted. Man, how long have these poor fuckers been down here? I shone my light to the front of the room. The VC were all facing a small altar. I walked toward it. On the simple stone plinth stood a gold statue illuminated by several candles. The statue was this ornately crafted thing. It was of a beautiful naked woman. The top half, anyway. The bottom half was something like an octopus. Dozens of tiny gold tentacles had been meticulously crafted to the woman's torso instead of legs. The statue had some writing at its base, a writing I didn't recognize. I reached out to pick the statue up to get a better look at it, but Benoit shouted, man, don't touch it. I retracted my hand about an inch from the statue. We need to leave this place, man, quickly, Benoit said as he put his hand on my shoulder. Are we just going to leave them like this? I said as I shone my light in their eyes. Listen man, we'll plant the C4 charges and put them on a 90 minute timer. He was already removing the C4 from his pouch on his belt. They're unarmed though, man. I implored turning to Benoit. These people are dead, man. Maybe worse than dead. I saw something like this once before at home in the bayou. Well, I didn't argue any longer. We planted the C4 charges in a rush, set the timers for 90 minutes, and ran up the stone staircase as fast as we could. It felt like a lifetime till we reached the small room with the lamp. I climbed into the tunnel and Benoit followed. Suddenly we can hear a woman's voice, faintly calling from far behind us. Ignore it man, ignore it, keep moving! Benoit shouted from behind me. I didn't need to be told, I wasn't going back. It was the longest crawl of my life. I saw daylight and I kept crawling even though my hands were raw and bloodied. I emerged into the light of the day and gasped for fresh air. Benoit followed. We warned the others about the C4 charges, but told them nothing else. He and I sat in total silence away from the tunnel entrance, waiting, praying. The ground shook, a dull thud was heard, and a spray of dirt emerged from the tunnel. We both breathed a sigh of relief. It was only after an experience like that you ask yourself the small questions.
To this day, I still ask myself, who the fuck were those people? And who was keeping those candles lit in that damn room? This was supposed a testimony given by a Vietnam veteran who was terminally ill with cancer. Uh, he was a tunnel rat. Um, whether or not this is a true story or not, I don't know, but it certainly caught my attention. Very creepy. And uh, if anybody knows anything more about this story or if anybody knows anything about the supposed statue that these people were transfixed by or under the spell of, I would love to hear about that in the comments. If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it.